When it comes to planning Iceland accommodation, you're making these mistakes that are costing you time and money. My name is Jeannie. I'm an Iceland travel expert with eight years of experience in this field, and I've seen some of my clients pay upwards of $500 a night for a hotel room, or even worse, not be able to find a place to stay. I don't want you to make these mistakes, so let's get into it. The first mistake that I see planners make when booking isolate accommodation is waiting too long to actually book. Here's the thing that you might not know about Iceland accommodation. First of all, it's a tiny country, right? 350,000 inhabitants. And really, they're still just trying to keep up with the demand of the explosion tourism boom. So downtown Reykjavik is full of cranes. They're trying to throw up hotels. People are converting their old rundown farms into guest houses. I mean, they're trying to keep up, but the reality is Iceland is so dang popular and there's still just more demand than there is supply. The caveat of this is outside of Reykjavik. I mean, I would say that you're, you're pretty good for finding accommodation in the city, but anything outside of that you really do have to look and book in advance. So you know, like that quaint fjord town that you wanna spend the night in, they might not have as many places available. So you might find that you're gonna to have to drive an hour or two out of your way at the end of the day if you want a place to sleep. So book in advance. The next mistake that I see people making is thinking there will be a pool at your hotel. So I might be speaking more to families with young children on this one, but just hear me out. Recently, I went to visit family in the US and we have a two-year-old son. And so I found myself looking for places that had a pool so that our toddler could play at the end of the day. Hotels in Iceland don't have pools. In fact, I can't think of one single place that has a pool. Instead, what you're gonna do is you are going to go to the local pools. There's one in almost every town in Iceland, which is the good thing. And this is exactly what the locals do. So nights, weekends, keeping your kids busy, going to relax after a long day, they go to the pools. These pools are not your average pools, right? They are actually like a mini water park in a lot of instances. So you'll find maybe a lap swimming pool, a regular like chilling out, playing, throwing the ball pool. Um, sometimes like a kitty splash pad with water elements, a slide, and then usually, well, almost always, no, always, multiple hot tubs, because this is how Icelanders love to warm up, especially in the cold weather months. And then some pools will have like a sauna or a steam room and a cold pool. So this is like a mini spa experience if you want it to be. Again, they're not gonna find a pool at your hotel. You're gonna have to go to the local pools. Now at this point, you might be wondering, so where are these accommodations located? And for that matter, where are all these pools? Well, you are in luck, my friend, because that's exactly why I have created my digital maps, where I have pinned hundreds of locations all around Iceland, including accommodation options for all budgets and where the pools and hot springs are located. All you have to do is check the link in the description box below and save yourself hours of research. Now let's move on to the next mistake. And that is not booking a place with breakfast included. It's so funny some of these differences, but the breakfast culture in Iceland is very, very different than, well, I'm just gonna say compared to the US because that's where I'm from, but compared to the US. And what I mean by that is there are not like breakfast restaurants especially that are open that early. It's just not a thing. Locals are not going out to a restaurant for breakfast. They're either making it at home or maybe at the at best heading to their local bakery to kind of like grab something light. But the thing is, and the major difference that I see is that places are not open early enough, especially once you get outside of Reykjavik. So when you're in the small towns, you're, there's not a lot of restaurants in the first place and much less restaurants that serve breakfast and then they're not gonna be open. So this is just like a rolling problem. So unless you bring your own breakfast with you or you're staying at accommodation that has a kitchen that you can cook in, I recommend finding accommodation that has breakfast included. Another fun difference that I wanted to point out here is that breakfast foods in Iceland are very different. 
I think that like maybe, you know, the UK has their own breakfast and, you know, maybe the Asian countries have their own breakfast. Well, Iceland has their own breakfast. And, you know, again, comparatively from the US, um, like when my family comes to visit, they're expecting like a waffle bar and build your own omelets and things like that, that do not exist in Iceland. So very common breakfast foods are more like of a fresh, cold situation. Let me give you some examples. Hard boiled eggs, uh, fresh vegetables like care, um, cucumbers, red peppers, deli meat like ham and salami, cheese slices, breads, lots of jams, butter, um, yogurt and muesli, like that kind of situation. And of course, coffee, juice, things like that. But it's it's just not like staying at a country inn where you, um, you walk downstairs at breakfast and like, you know, it smells like waffles. The next mistake that I would see people making is expecting that the amenities at the accommodations are going to be similar than what you're used to in your home country. A couple of examples for this is Europe in general is smaller for everything, right? So smaller rooms, smaller bathrooms, smaller sinks. Uh, you know, it's not gonna be, unless you're staying at a very nice, expensive place in the city, it's not going to be spacious and have uh, like a doorman and things like that. The other really interesting difference that I have noticed and love is that Icelanders sleep with separate comforters. So it will be, you know, like a comforter on each side of the bed that's folded up. So each person can like burrito themselves in the blanket. As an American, <laughs> This is very different from the bedding that we have, right? Where it's like this big comforter that goes across the whole bed. That's not how they do it in Iceland. And it's actually really cozy. Uh, I have come to love it and we've switched our bedding to it, by the way. The other thing that's maybe interesting to note is that a lot of times if you order like a king size room, it might actually be two twin beds that have pushed together because they're, you know, trying to make do with what they have and they don't have like king bed rooms. Um, and so you might find that there's a gap in between or sometimes depending on the place, I've been to some guest houses that like you book the king and then it's not actually made up for that. You have to push the beds together. It doesn't matter. It's fun. You're on vacation. But those are kind of some of the nuanced things that, that I've personally seen at different accommodations. The next mistake that I see travelers making is only searching for hotels. So by that, I mean there is a variety of accommodation types that you could actually stay in Iceland. Hotels, obviously, I think that's where people would start looking. Hotels are gonna be like your bigger or smaller chains, usually located in Reykjavik city or bigger towns around the country. When you get into the small villages, they don't have chain hotels or sometimes hotels at all. So the benefits obviously of a hotel is like you have a private room with a private bathroom. You know, you have some concierge services, you have a front desk staff that's maybe there 24 hours, like a really nice full breakfast, things like that. So there are other options. Another thing that you could consider is a guest house. This is usually just what it sounds like, a house where multiple guests can stay. So maybe people have converted their, their home into sectioned off areas where you would stay in a room, but then there's like kind of like a shared living space. You might get your own bathroom or there might be a shared bathroom. There's kind of different options. A guest house could also include a kitchen and a guest house could be a standalone house, right? So a lot of Icelanders are building out these cabins kind of out in the middle of nowhere and those are not considered hotels. They're considered more of like a guest house situation. So it would have everything you need right there to kind of, you know, eat, sleep, and the like. What I like about guest houses is that the prices are usually cheaper and it's more of a cozy feel, right? Instead of just arriving at this big hotel and, and hotels are great because some people want that experience, but in, in Iceland, sometimes it is really nice to be out in the countryside alone, a little bit more quiet, or it might be nice to meet other travelers that way. Another option is a hostel. Now, before your mind goes to like a 20 person dorm in Europe, that is definitely not the situation in Iceland. Hostels in Iceland are not like around Europe. They're actually really nice places, but again, it's more of a community feel. You can get a private room at a hostel. It's gonna be a little more expensive than a shared room, 
you can get shared multiple bedrooms um, where there's kind of like bunk beds and, and things like that. But they also have kitchen facilities. It's probably gonna be a shared bathroom compared to a private bathroom. And the benefit of the hostel is for saving money and meeting up with other travelers. So again, just depending on what you're looking for, there's multiple options. And then you have the option for Airbnb. A lot of people know what this is, it's very common, and it's becoming more common in Iceland as some people are listing you know, their second homes or their summer homes on Airbnb. But again, Airbnb might be nice for a group of people, a family that's traveling together, someone that wants a little bit more space, like their own living room, their own kitchen, and things like that. Okay, my friends, now that you have learned the mistakes to avoid when booking accommodations, the next thing you need to learn is how to find these locations. Hint, it is not Hotels.com. So that's why you need to make sure to watch my next video where I talk about how to search for accommodation in Iceland. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, happy planning.